Many of our Arduino inputs and outputs will be digital in the sense that they have only discrete states. So for example, switches and LEDs are either on or off, and we can treat them as binary ones and zeros. In this video, we'll discuss the essential digital input and output operations that we can do with these signals. Before we begin, let's just sort of discuss the meaning of a single bit. It's context sensitive. It depends upon the semantics of where it's coming from. So just to make an example, if you had some sensor at the middle of something like a nuclear reactor that was detecting whether it was going to melt down or not, that one might be very informative. It might mostly be zero, and then a one is an emergency. And the one by itself doesn't carry that. It's the context of where it's being interpreted from. Likewise, digital signals that might be on or off can also vary in time. And we often use that to encode data numerically. Uh, the signals that come across your network are effectively binary at some level, but then can code numbers and data, uh, but can also be essentially analog. A pulse that varies in width in some analog way might encode an analog value as a variation in the timing. So the digital signals can be used in lots of different ways, but we're going to start with sort of simple on-off kinds of signals. So to see the example here, uh, we're going to look at a very a circuit that has one bit input and one bit output. Tinkercad set up with a breadboard with a uh, switch with a pull-up resistor and an LED uh, with positive logic driven off an output that are wired to our simulated Arduino. That'll give us something to look at. So to delve into the code, I'll open the code window. And let's just walk through again, kind of line by line. And there's a few C++ things we'll talk about on the way. The first is, uh, I've made some definitions that describe my hardware. Uh, the very first couple of lines here, const int a name, which is switch underscore pin and the value 8. Uh, this is a good convention. I basically defined a compiler constant. The const says it's a constant value that'll never change. I've given it an all caps name, which is just a convention for a, a constant value. It's not essential, but it's a good convention. And then the 8, which in this case describes a pin number. And on the circuit, that is the digital pin 8 uh, on the upper row of pins there. The second is LED pin equals 4, also defining that the, the LED is wired to the out digital output 4. We'll use those in a second here. Inside the setup function, we see a new function, pin mode, with a capital M on mode. The first argument to pin mode is a pin number, reflecting something in the hardware. And the second is a keyword output. The Arduino has a set of digital inputs and outputs, which are pretty configurable. Some, the, even the analog inputs can be used as digital mode out, inputs and outputs. So when you start your program, it's important to tell the Arduino the nature of the hardware that we're going to be using, specifically by what mode to run each pin in. So in this case, we're declaring that the LED pin will be an output pin. Otherwise, it would default to an input, and the output operations wouldn't even work. The second mode there, pin mode switch pin input, uh, effectively redeclares the default to say that it's input, but I also consider it good programming practice to explicitly label the function for each pin so that when we reprogram, we understand what we're trying to do. The input and output are Arduino-specific keywords. They're not part of C itself, and the pin mode function is part of the Arduino API. So there we, we start up, and we tell the Arduino, use this pin for output, use the other pin for input. In the loop function, uh, we basically transfer data around. Uh, we see a new function here, digital read, which is given a pin number and performs some operations to go to the hardware and sample the value as a digital input and return a binary value. So physically, there's a voltage on a pin that can occupy some range of voltages. The hardware itself discretizes that so that voltages below some threshold get read as a digital zero and voltages above some threshold get read as a digital one. So in our case, it's a, it's a direct translation from voltage to a value. And then we, we, that returns a value. Now we're seeing a function call that takes a parameter, returns a value, and returns a value that we store into this variable that we call value. Note that value is declared within the function. Technically, it's an automatic variable. But the key is, because it's declared in the body of the function, it can acquire values and be used for calculations, but then effectively vanishes when the function exits. So it, it, it only has a value while the body of loop is executing. We print the value to see it, and then we call the digital write function. Digital write takes two arguments, a hardware pin indicator, in this case the LED pin number, and then a, a logic value to send out. So in this case, it'll be either 0, 1. 
And then there's a delay just to slow the overall execution. So when I run this program, I'll hit start here. Let me make the LED more visible. There we go. The LED is, is starting at, uh, I'm, I apologize for the manipulation here. I'll get that there. Okay, there we go. So the LED is starting visible, it's glowing. And the reason is that the fact that we used a pull up resistor. So the switch is currently open. The digital input is actually defaulting to the five volt input. And that's being read as a one into value, which is then being written out to the LED being on. If I press on the switch, we'll see the LED goes off. Let me zoom in on that. Here we go, LED goes off. So when I press on it, then the switch closes, brings the voltage down to a close to zero volts. That's discretized to a digital zero as a value. And then that is output to the LED as a, a low current, which then the LED is off. So the key to emphasize there is there's a physical voltage. There's kind of some kind of signal. There's hardware that's transducing that to a one bit value. And then the digital read and digital write functions are used to sample that value and return what's a number, which at that point is a digital zero or digital one. I mean, the nature of computing is there is no ambiguity at that point. A zero is a zero, a one is a one. Any kind of ambiguity in the voltage, any kind of noise has been eliminated to a, a definitive value. The other thing to note here is we're gonna start to see more of this. It's not read continuously. There's a cycle where it's sampled, processed, and then there's some delay. And even if we took the delay statement out, there's always some processing time. So any kind of change in the input doesn't necessarily have an immediate effect here. This, the program has to actually sample that value and then act on it by producing another value on the output for any change to occur. And that cycle time is another property of, of digital systems that happens over time. Just to close here, I'm going to uh, jump over to the reference for one moment. One thing you may need to do in, in various assignments is to generate audio. And there is some, a built-in function called tone. It is possible on a real Arduino to simply cycle the output on and off fast enough using digital write to create audible rates. So uh, frequencies that would then be generate sound and run through some kind of speaker. Uh, the hardware has some special hooks, some actual hardware support for doing this more efficiently. So the tone function is provided as a way of generating a square wave on an output that can produce an audible pitch. And if we look at the syntax, there's a couple modes. The most common is simply the first argument is a pin number for where the output's going, and the second is a frequency in hertz for uh, the tone to produce. And that's a way that will produce melodies and produce audible pitches. I'm not going to demonstrate it in Tinkercad, uh, but that's actually the, the, uh, the right path to go. So just in, to synop in synopsis here, we address very briefly the kind of semantics of what digital might mean, emphasize the fact that like physical voltages get turned into numbers, and then numbers get turned back into currents and voltages uh, through these operators. And then the syntax being there's these two functions, digital write and digital read, which you'll use quite a bit as the essential operations for input and output on a digital level.